Mitch, you're watching the SA Sports Show. Time to talk about SA NFL. The finals have started. Luke Marchioro joins us, the master of the SA NFL. Luke, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, what an interesting weekend, mate. Let's talk about uh, North Adelaide and South first. I mean, South 15 11, 101, North 8 10, 58. Was the margin, did the, did the gap surprise you? It always happens a little bit in finals. I think teams try and chase the game, but the way South started was really good. They were three or four goals to nothing at quarter time and really could have put the game away in that first quarter, missed some good chances and um, opened up the game from there just before half time. They kicked four unanswered and that was really game over at half time, 40 odd points, and they kicked away from there. They were coming on a bit of a low though, North Adelaide. They were really, really ordinary in the game against Sturt the week before. They got belted and uh, they, 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 I think we picked that that South would probably knock them off because they had to come back from a, a really poor display, I thought. It's always difficult, I think, when you come in on, you know, in losing form, only a couple of these AFL sides mm. to buck the trend, but I think their confidence was pretty shot and South Adelaide had a really good win going into the finals. Exactly. Just starting mm. to get their team right and getting mm. a few players back in and starting to play some really good footy. Yeah. It's an interesting one, is it? Because South looked really good at the start of the season. Then, as you said, they got some injuries and they were spluttering. Mm. North were inconsistent for the whole year, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, South Adelaide have probably been the most injury hit this year and North Adelaide played some really good footy in, during the middle period of the year but after the COVID lockdown break they sort of really struggled to get back into their form and a couple of injuries, Billy Hartung has played about seven games for them in two years and I think they were six and one when he played so he just couldn't get on the park and they um, yeah, paid That's the true. consequences toward the end of the year. I mean, quickly before we get on to Eagles and Norwood, a bit of talk about Josh Franco coming back. Is North going to make a move? I think that there'll be some changes at North, definitely. There seems to be a bit of personnel changing. Mitch Clisby, who was a premiership player, retired. Um, Tom Schwartz sounds like he's moving on from that footy club as well. So there's going to be some changes there in playing personnel. Whether there's something happens on the coaching front will be rain to be seen. But um, there's definitely plenty of quality around, as we've seen with some of the appointments last year, with Jade Rawlings coming into the competition and a few other guys like that. So I think there'll definitely be some changes around the competition. Well, it's a really interesting time. There's a, you know, 100 AFL coaches looking for jobs last year, and they, yeah, they exactly. started late. And I yeah, think there's exactly. a lot a lot of pressure on those people right now. Hey, the Eagles, Norwood, mate, it was a ripping game. Seven points in the end mm. to the Eagles. Norwood had some really good opportunities to get it. I think Jade Rawlings would have gone to bed Sunday night thinking that his side missed an opportunity. They probably got the conditions that suited them. They're not a big, free-flowing scoring team. The weather really slowed them down, and they got great games out of Richard Douglas, but and they but they won inside 50s, they won clearances, and just couldn't convert it into score. So the Eagles' class in their forward line with Stengel and Menzel kicking five of their nine goals was probably the difference in the game yeah. and where the difference was between the two. Sides. And that's exactly right. That was the difference because I I watched the game and I thought Norwood will win this. The way Norwood were playing, I just thought they're going to sneak this. They, they, they're going to do the. But it was the some real experience from the Eagles that got them. On it. Really, in the end, those guys you talked about, Menzel, Menzel in particular, did nothing, did nothing, did nothing and just bobs up. He's a bob up type. Look out! You're going to watch him the whole game, or both of them. And they've watch. got a lot of players like that. Tyson Stengel's another guy like that as exactly well. Right. And they've got these other smaller players that you don't hear about: though. Komatijani, Pudney, these young kids that yeah. give them a lot of speed and a lot of energy on the yeah. ball. And they're only burst players, but when they do that, they're really dangerous. And they got 10 minutes out of Tyson Stengel after halftime. They got 10 minutes out of Daniel Menzel, and that pretty much won them the game. Exactly and they'll go right. into this week fully mm. confident, knowing they won and not playing quite yeah. their best footy. And the other big, the other fellow, the big bloke we spoke about, Hayes, even though the conditions probably didn't suit, he still took some really telling grabs he did some marks, some real, at really important times. He's a good player. I, I've got time for him, a lot of time for him. He's going to be player. a McGarry medal chance, I think. There's oh, a I lot of talent not. in that team. Yeah. and I think their experience in their back six, it's a young Norwood forward line, and they really preyed on those intercept marking opportunities, Luke yeah. Thompson and da uh, Pat Graffita and these type of guys as well. So, yeah. you know, their bit of experience and a bit of quality probably overwhelmed Norwood in the I end. I mean, none is a barometer for Norwood. He came back, he's had that hamstring injury, mm. kicks a goal, and looked like he was pretty comfortable coming back in. So hopefully he He's better for the run. Norwood up against the Panthers. It's going to be a really interesting game. Um, South Adelaide held Matthew Broadbent out last week as well, so they'll expect him to get him back and be 100%. Norwood have got question marks on a few guys coming back in, mm. so whether they can play them all in Brad McKenzie, Paul Puopolo and Michael Talley is going to be really interesting. Um, whether you can bring three guys that are a little bit underdone into a cutthroat final. And South are playing some really good footy. They've got some you know, real X factors in their forward line. Liam Fick kicked four goals. Hayden Sampson, Eamon Wilkinson give them some real speed, which has troubled Norwood a bit this year as well. So I definitely think that South Adelaide will go into that game probably full of confidence, even if they're not the favourite. There's, there's some big players coming back, isn't there, really? There's some big-name players that could possibly play this weekend, like Biopolo. Uh, Mackenzie, who was a North Melbourne uh, defender yep. and whatever, could both be back for Norwood. Partington for Glenelg uh, is there again, a bit of a chance. And you mentioned 
Broadbent from South Adelaide, who they held back because of a slight hammy, could play this weekend. So there's and a lot of experience coming back in. These are the gambles you take in finals, is whether you can bring guys in that aren't mm. quite 100%. Jared Wright held firm last week, didn't yeah. play Matthew Broadbent, yeah. and Good they reaped the yeah. riverdens by playing it. So they'll probably get him back in at full strength. And, you know, these type of decisions can decide a final. If you're a player short early in a oh, game, yeah. it can definitely mm. swing the momentum. Of who do you put on Bryce Gibbs, mate? Who, who do Norwood go to? I don't know. I think whether they go head to head with a Douglas and just try and, you know, go head to head and say, right, if Bryce Gibbs wants to get 25, Douglas might get 30 the other way. Whether they try a more defensive method or a defensive midfielder through there would be really interesting. Some of these guys at Rokar or go real heavy body at stoppage. But I think they'd like to back their midfield given how well they played last week to try and take them Good on. And it's an interesting one, though, because I'm sitting here thinking as a coach. Mm. I reckon I'll go with Douglas. I reckon I'll put Douglas on Gibbs and say, let's go head to head. Does that rob him a little bit? I mean, does that take away Douglas's uh, ability to, 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 to bust the game open? Because he's that type of player. He, he, he runs lines and whatever. Is he going to be worried about looking after Well, I reckon they're both Gibbs. worried about it. They're both worried about who should be looking after who, and sometimes it can go that way. I mean, we talked last week, Mitch Griggs been in, in scintillating for after him. After so being dropped. Yeah, mm. you go, so maybe Griggy, you know, I, mean, I think you're right. You could back your midfield in, yeah. but you go... Although Blighty always used to say, you've got to make one change going into a final, just one. Mm. So you might, hypothetically, you put... Mitch Grigg at uh, full forward yeah. because the teams are planning all week for how they're going to play yeah. and then suddenly one bloke goes to where he's not supposed to be and the whole team goes well, what are we supposed to do? And yeah. North Adelaide need so. to find someone that's going to kick them a score as well I think yeah. that, uh, sorry Norwood if they don't kick 12 or 13 goals I don't think they can win this week so they need to find an avenue for goal so whether that's Matty Nunn going forward whether it's Mitch Grigg going forward whether it's you know Paul Piopolo coming back in they need someone that can kick three or four goals and sort of combat that scoring yeah. power of South Adelaide They got hurt didn't they in their mid-season draft by Lee and, uh, they lost Callow, which hurt Callow, them as a, which key, was a forward. key forward. Yeah. And, and a bloke that was playing, well, obviously playing very well because he got picked up in the draft. But yeah. th that's the, the exact type of guy they need now. In and the, in that and they're hurt now. by the lockdown in Victoria as well because mm. Matthew Parker got drafted by Richmond in the mid-season draft. He's playing for South Fremantle. So with the quarantine requirements for South Australia, they haven't been able to get Callow mm. back over to play, which they would mm. have been able to do. So that's hurt them as well. But okay. I well, think South Adelaide will win a pretty close contest. All right, going to go for South. Saturday, 3.15 Adelaide Oval. The other one, of course, 7.15 at Adelaide Oval is the big one. The Bays up against the Eagles. Now, the Bays have been dominant all year. But Eagles, uh, final harden. They're a good team. So this is going to be a really good contest. This will be one of the games of the season. Channel 7 is going to be prime time, national television on around the country on Saturday night with no AFL game on. So it's a really good chance to showcase the very best of the competition. Mm. I think it's going to be a really good game of footy. I think the Eagles will go in full of confidence. I know they haven't beaten Glenelg this year, but I think they know that they can play the Adelaide over well. They've got plenty of finals experience, and I think they can really cause the base some headaches. Is Partington a worry here? Round 17 is when he missed uh, with the hammy. Is he a, is he a worry? Is, is that a worry that, that he'd come into a final... Mm, you know, I mean, he's got to play, I suppose, if he's ready. I think if he's fit, he plays. But mm. I think Glenel, whether he plays or not, will back their, themselves into causing okay. damage and play. Yeah. I think, but. I think the interesting matchup will be how they go with the Eagles small forwards as well. Yeah. I think the midfields are fairly even. Yeah. Partington probably pushes that towards Glenelg, but I think how well they can contain that speed of the Eagles and try and slow the Eagles down on Adelaide yeah. will be really interesting. Yeah. It's a bit of a poison chalice this game because the winner of this semi final that's gone straight through the grand final is zero and six in the last <laughs> team that won this uh, won the grand final from winning this game was in twenty fourteen. So it does um, you know, it may not be always uh, what it's cracked up to be winning straight through to a grand final. If you want to bring up stats like that what about the stat that South Adelaide had not beaten North Adelaide in a final on the Adelaide Oval since 1903? It's, now, that's a stat. It's a year for uh, weird things to happen. So <laughs> whether the Eagles win this week or yeah. who knows, South might be able to, South or North might be able to come and make a bit of history from All the All right, Luke, we love having you, mate. You are the stats master. It will be an exciting weekend. I assume you've gone for the Tigers and the Panthers? I'm going to pick the Eagles. You're going for the Eagles? Saturday All right, wow, okay. okay. Eagles or the Panthers? We'll look forward to coming in next week, mate, to see whether you're right. If you are, we want the lotto numbers from you. Stay with us. Still, a bit more to come.